My dear brothers and sisters, we live in very challenging times. This virus has done havoc in many countries and is causing pain in our own country. Italy can be a great learning situation for us. Thousands are sick. Many doctors have died. In one diocese, I think 27 priests have died in one diocese alone. So let's learn from what's happened there. I have a duty of care and a responsibility before God to say what I'm going to say today. Mass, the sacraments, are so important for us. But like so many of my brother bishops in Australia, and many, many, many bishops around the world now in many countries, I've had to make some very difficult decisions. As from next Sunday, we will suspend all public Sunday Masses. The priests, of course, will continue celebrating Mass for you every Sunday, indeed, every day. That will not stop. And they're going to be offering those Masses and prayers for you as the people of God. But sadly, on medical advice, and also following the line of many of my brother bishops around the world, including the bishops here in Australia, I will not be allowing Sunday public messes as of next Sunday for the good, for the coming good of the community. I will, however, continue to provide Sunday mess on television, which will be broadcast every Sunday at nine o'clock on Aboriginal television. That will be every Sunday at nine o'clock. This will be put also on YouTube and you can watch it anytime if you cannot be there at nine o'clock. It will also be on a number of radio stations. The list of radio stations is on our diocesan website as well on the handout being given to you at Mass today. I am grateful to the owner of this television station who is donating totally the use of their services at no charge to us, saving us thousands of dollars every week, which of course we don't have. I'm so grateful to them. Other parishes within the diocese are also making use of technology to provide Mass online. And don't forget, you can have spiritual communion. If you desire to receive Holy Communion, but cannot be there, and tell the Lord, Lord, I am sorry, but I cannot be there. I wish to receive the sacrament. No doubt you receive the grace of the sacrament, just as if you were able to be at Mass. I remove the obligation of going to Mass from everybody at the moment. Temporarily, of course, I give a dispensation, which I can do as a bishop. I've also given the priests dispensation and permission to do the third form of reconciliation this Sunday at the beginning of each Mass, so they can give general absolution. The conditions for this absolution will remain as normal, that if sins are of course forgiven, but if there is a serious sin, there's still the obligation to mention it next time you go to the sacrament of confession. The sacraments, confession, will still be available, of course, in appropriate ways, at the right distance from the priest, in church or outdoors. The sacraments of anointing of the sick and care of the sick and the hospitals will of course continue. The other ministries of the church, for example, funerals, baptisms, marriages, will continue in appropriate and legal ways, will not abandon the people. The priests will still be available to talk to, time on the phone with or in person, if you need to talk to someone. Sometimes, under these very stressful times, we will need to talk to someone. But the day-to-day -day pastoral care of your family life and other areas in your life where you might need to talk to a priest, will still be available. Give them a ring, organize a time maybe to meet them. Our churches, where they are normally open, will remain open, as long as we can do it legally, and with proper care of our people. I haven't even told the priests what I'm going to say now, but I've had to make this decision because of the increase of cases in the NT. I am now suspending sacramental preparation for children's preparation of First Communion, First Confession and Confirmation till a later date in the year when it becomes safer to do this. I've had to make that difficult decision. Parents have spoken to me of their concerns. I think they are right. We need to err on the side of prudence. 
So my dear friends, we need to care for each other. We need to we have a moral responsibility to do our best to slow down as much as we can the spreading of this terrible disease by caring for each other, by being there for each other. Also, we need to make sure we don't, under pressure, do things we normally not do. For example, hoard things, become selfish, become short-tempered with each other. It's understandable that we are frightened and that many people are frightened. But please hold on to your nerve because Jesus is with us and he will not abandon us. So we take all the proper precautions. We listen to our medical advisors. We continue being there for each other at the same time to do it in a, in a way that's appropriate, caring and loving. So my friends, you'll probably hear more from me as time goes on. Let's rally together. Let's support each other. Let's keep our prayers going. And remember, Jesus is with us even unto the end of time. One final area that I'd like to mention to you is the fact that, of course, our parishes now will have no income unless people are on direct debit. I urge you to keep supporting the parishes in ways that are possible to you. And I know that many of you are suffering financially. So perhaps you cannot do much. We can all do what we can because we need to still pay our bills as a parish. We still need to feed our priests and provide petrol for them to move around and look after them as well. God bless you all. Thank you.